Okay, now, I bet a lot of you are very tempted to take that first expression right there and write it as sine squared plus cosine squared, and you're thinking, great, that's equal to 1. I can simplify this so much easier. Not quite, okay? Not quite. That first expression in parentheses is a binomial, okay? A binomial means you're adding or subtracting two terms together. If you have a binomial squared, you cannot just apply that squared to both terms. Now, if that were multiplication, then yes. If that was sine of x times cosine of x, then yes, you could write that sine squared of x times cosine squared of x. But it's not. It's a binomial. So when that's squared, you have to write that expression. Remember, squaring something means you multiply it by itself. So you need to rewrite it as sine of x plus cosine of x times sine of x plus cosine of x. And what do we have to do with that? Oil. We have to double distribute, multiply it all out. And we have to do the same thing with sine of x minus cosine of x. Because it was also squared. Now, this is going to get a little big, so either write tiny or make sure you've got plenty of room. Because <clears throat> when we start multiplying these things out, it gets long. Okay? So, when we multiply the first two terms, there, sine of x times sine of x is sine squared x. The outside is sine of x times cosine of x, so we have plus sine x cosine x. The inside is cosine times sine. The order of multiplication doesn't matter, so since I already have sine of x times cosine of x, I'm going to write it in that order. I'm going to write it sine of x times cosine of x. And then my last, cosine times cosine, so I have plus cosine squared. Now, I am going to multiply out the second one, but I'm going to go ahead and simplify this first one so that I don't have to write quite as much for the second one. Okay, so simplifying-wise, I have sine of x cosine of x twice. I have two of those. So I can just write that as 2 sine of x cosine of x. Now, what's the only difference between... The first one that we have to do versus the, sec <clears throat> versus the second one that we have to do. The sine, okay? The second one, both of them are negative. So the only thing that's going to change is we're still going to have sine squared x. Instead of adding 2 sine x cosine of x, we're going to have two negatives. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as minus 2 sine x cosine of x. I'm just trying to save myself some space. And negative cosine times negative cosine is still positive cosine squared. So that makes my life a little bit easier. I don't have to write quite as much by making that note. Okay, and I'm just going to copy that down to the next line. And now it's time to simplify. There are several different ways we could go at this point. Okay, the first thing that I see is that I have positive 2 sine of x cosine of x, and I have negative 2 sine of x cosine of x. So those cancel, right? Plus 2 and minus 2, less u. Those are gone. That's nice. Now, at this point, I could say, well, I have two sine squares and I have two cosine squares. But really, I think it's easier if we just leave it like this. Because what do we know sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to? One. So, we can replace that first pair with a one. We can replace that second pair with a 1, and we've got 1 plus 1, which hopefully, way back when you learned that that was 2. Hopefully. This 
despite what the skeptics say, one plus one is two. Okay? So, kind of lengthy, but it shrank really, really fast. Okay, once we got it multiplied out, stuff canceled, we could pair it together and we could replace. Okay, let's look at a similar one, but it involves more ratios here. Okay, it involves more ratios. Instead of just having sine and cosine, we've got sine, we've got cosine, which is looking pretty cozy. Uh, <laughs> that is the best reaction I've ever gotten out of that one. Um, that makes me feel a little bit better. I know, I'm, I'm really, I'm really cheesy, but it's okay. Y'all love me for it, right? Uh, we got tangents and cotangents. <laughs> I'm going to try to fall asleep and I'll just randomly start laughing. Glad I can do that for you. Okay, so apparently when we multiply that stuff out right there, we're apparently going to end up with secant of y and cosecant of y. Um, so let's go ahead and distribute. Technically, your first step could be expressing tangent and cotangent in terms of sine and cosine. We're going to have to do that at one point or another, so you could do it here or you could do it in the next step. I'm going to go ahead and distribute first. Okay, we have a binomial times a binomial, therefore we need to FOIL. So we have sine of y times tangent of y plus the outside gives us sine of y times cotangent of y. plus the inside cosine of y times tangent of y plus the last cosine of y times cotangent of y. And this is supposed to be equal to secant of y plus cosecant of y. Now, unlike the previous problem, we don't have any terms that we can combine here. Um, we've got sine tangent, sine cotangent, cosine tangent, cosine cotangent. We can't put any of those together. So here's where we need to express everything in terms of sine and cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Tangent is sine over cosine, and cotangent is cosine over sine. All right. <clears throat> Here is another really good place to illustrate where um, no, no. Okay. we need to simplify. Okay? We need to simplify anything that can be simplified. So we need to multiply these fractions out. So sine of y times sine of y over cosine of y. When you multiply fractions, you do not have to have common denominators. You just multiply the numerators, so that's sine squared. Multiply the denominators, that's over cosine. For the second one, we've got sine in the top and sine in the bottom, so those cancel. So we've got cosine. For the third one, the cosines cancel, and we've got just sine. For the last one, it doesn't cancel, but cosine times cosine is cosine squared over sine. All right, now I'm looking for something to develop out of this. Right now it's not looking like I'm getting any more simple. 
Um, <clears throat> so something that my eye is drawn to is if I look at where I'm going. Okay, where am I trying to get? I'm trying to get to secant and cosecant, which I know are related to cosine and sine. They're reciprocals, and I see that I have sine in one of my denominators, I have cosine in one of my in the other denominator. So it would be great if somehow I could maybe get these two terms to go with those fractions. Uh, and maybe get something else to cancel. So my eye is drawn to the fact that I have sine squared right here, and I've got a cosine. It'd be great if that was cosine squared, right? And it would be great if that had a denominator of cosine. Well, I can fix that problem. I can give it a denominator of cosine by multiplying it top and bottom by cosine of y. Because I haven't changed anything, okay, if I would simplify that, one of my cosines would, and I would just have the cosine right there, I'm just writing it in a form that makes it more useful to me. I'm going to do the same thing right here. It'd be great if this were sine squared, so I could combine it with this cosine squared, but i got to have that denominator of sine, so I'm going to multiply that one, top and bottom, by sine. So, these both have a denominator of cosine of y, so I can add their numerators. And the second numerator is now cosine squared. These two both have a denominator of sine, and the first numerator is now sine squared. And we are two steps away. Because those numerators, sine squared plus cosine squared, one. So we have one over the cosine of y, we have one over the sine of y. And those can be rewritten using their reciprocal functions, secant plus cosecant, which is what we were trying to get to. Okay, that one took a little bit more. Okay, do we have questions about that? I think I've got one more that I want to do, and then I'll let y'all practice. Is it starting to make a little bit more sense? It really, the more experience you have with it, the better you're going to get at them. Okay, I expected yesterday to be a little rough, um, never having done it before. It takes a while to get acclimated. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now, number seven's kind of interesting. Oh, I lied, I have two. Number seven's kind of interesting here. We have cosecant to the fourth.